Oh, I smell oh. toast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it just popped up. Look at here. Well, hi there, food friends. We a toast to you. Um, we're toasting up some nice bread from the bakery. Uh, welcome to Cavalcade of Food, by the way. I'm Kevin. And I'm Ralph. Behind the camera, we made it through another winter. And look where we are as I live and breathe another season at the cottage. Um, and we literally just opened it up yesterday. Uh, so here we are um, for another wonderful season. So we're going to keep it simple today and just make toast. <laughs> no, just kidding. Yeah. Um, well, toast is a part of it, but we um, there's a bakery up here we like to go to, and they make wonderful bread, and so we got a loaf of that, and he says, okay, um, we're going to make something for lunch, and I found this, dried beef, okay, so we're going to make cream chip beef on toast. With your own outside, variation. A la cavalcade. Um, so... What we're going to do first is we're getting our toast ready because that'll be what we're going to pour it over. And then I've got a bowl here. Um, and what I'm going to do, Ralph, is this is uh, dried beef. Take a look at this here. So people of a certain generation will know immediately when they see dried chip exactly. beef. Exactly. It's about. Um, it is, uh, well, it's not quite as, as tough as like a beef jerky, but it is dried out. And it is on the salty side. It almost looks like salami. Doesn't it kind of? So like a I'm, beef salami. I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in there. And I'm going to take a little hot water here. And just pour that in there. I'm not going to leave it in too long. But I just... Soften that shoe leather. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> We're going to soften it up. And you know what? It'll extract some of the saltiness too out of, out of the, the beef. So let's just leave that in there for a minute. This is all done in a skillet. Um, I'm gonna turn this on here. I've got a quarter uh, cup of butter. Um, this is uh, half of a stick. Okay, we're gonna make a roux. And we've done this many times before, haven't we, Ralph? Yeah, it's like a white cream sauce? Yes, exactly, cream sauce. And so what we're gonna do is uh, we'll get this butter melting so a quarter cup of butter, once that's melted, I'm going to add a quarter cup of flour. Um, it's just so great to be back up at the cottage again. Yes, it is. It's, it's been a long winter. And um, uh, so what, uh, what all the crazy things that go on in one's life, it's nice to have a constant in every spring come back to this place yeah. and open up the cottage. A comforting place to make comfort food. Absolutely. Uh, I'm going to let the butter melt. I just turned the, the burner on here, so it's going to take a few minutes. We'll come back. I'll get my other ingredients together, which I've got two cups of milk here, um, a small can of mushrooms, um, and then pepper. And I like to use this. This is like a seasoned salt, Beaumont. Uh, Beaumont. 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 So what is it? Uh, is it a mixture of spices? It, it's, um, it's, well, its main ingredient is salt, but it's also got ground celery seed in it, um, a little onion powder, okay. I think. So, um, and so if it's it, not easy to get that, our friends you can just use regular salt, or you can you use your other own. favorite seasoned right. salt. Okay. But I like it particularly with the beef. Now, what I'm going to do here, Ralph, is I'm going to drain this out. Okay. You can't use that water for anything. No. So, is it easy to find uh, this uh, chipped beef? Or well, beef? you know what? Not everybody has it. Um, I think it's kind of a thing of. Uh, how would we say uh, old, another era? Old-fashioned old stores and um, another generation. Yeah, but most large grocery stores uh, would have it, usually with the canned meats. Um, now what I'm going to do is we're going to, I'm going to kind of slice this up into mm -hmm. small little ribbons and chunks here. Oh, okay. Okay. Let's see Hot. how you're doing it. Yeah. Yeah, we have friends and family of a certain generation who remember this uh, this recipe during you know cafeterias and during wartime and during um, you know it was a, it was a staple of, of certain it, meals. It was. I think a lot of uh, people remember it from the Second World War because obviously uh, dried beef did not need to be refrigerated. 
So it was something that could be shipped to the troops and the cooks in the mess halls could very easily make, um, you know, it wasn't often that they had fresh meat, so it was using a dried beef like this really um, was made it easy to ship overseas and okay so we've got that chopped up the butter is starting to melt we'll come back in a minute when we're just going to put our quarter cup together. of butter is pretty much melted here Ralph I'm letting some of the uh, water evaporate and, and, it, and it browns simultaneously yeah you it? can see the butter is starting to brown I want it to brown just a little bit yeah you have to be careful with butter because it does burn it quickly does. but the when the butter's a little darker I, I like this dish when the the sauce is not really super pale it has a little bit of a color a color to it. to it so if we Okay, see how the butter, you can see, I don't know if the camera yeah, yeah, can pick it up. it's a little browner, mm -hmm. and, and so you just um, kind of adjust your flame or your heat to make sure you're not burning it, but that it's still browning the right amount. Exactly, so it's the same amount of flour to butter, so we've got a quarter cup here, okay, just, just regular flour. Now we're going to stir that in, and... Turn the heat up a bit? The, uh, I actually turned it down oh, a little oh. bit. Um, because I want to have a little bit more control here but you want to make sure that all this flour is good and dissolved and really incorporated into the melted butter you see those lumps yeah. you want to get rid of all those lumps this is you know people who make roux a lot um, and some people use oil instead of butter as the fat it's basically fat and a starch um, so you know yeah but so you've got you know butter oil something like that uh and then flour but how you how long right now it's kind of just dark blonde i would say kind of like you? a nutty mm -hmm. a light nutty color you can let this cook darker and darker and darker and in certain parts of the country especially like where they're making um gumbos and things like that they tend to let it get cook much darker. I'm not going to let it go much beyond this. I think this is a good color. And you can hear how Kevin's spoon is um, making contact with the frying pan because that's how you're making sure that the flour is dissolved. Exact, exactly right. Um, Alright, so I've got two cups of milk here. We're going to put the milk in. Okay. So, I'm going to take this opportunity to put in some nice pepper, oh maybe a half a teaspoon, quarter of a teaspoon, and then we're going to put in our boumand, our seasoned salt, okay? So let's or put Or boumand. Boumand. I don't know why I always want to say boo. I think it's bow and it's B-E-A, is it B-E-A-U? How yeah. do you spell it? B-E-A-U, bow. Oh, bow, yeah, like a, like a boyfriend bow. Like mm -hmm. So, okay, here we go. Now... Kind of. This is a how roux work now. As this kind of gets um, towards boiling, it'll thicken. So we're just going to keep stirring. So there's a lot of chemistry going on in here. There is. There's a lot happening. So the more heated it gets, the thicker it gets. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're saying? I actually may even go with the whisk here, so that I can get. Yeah, there we go. That's helping to ensure that everything's integrated and yeah. dissolved properly. Yeah, you want to get the, the roux, which is kind of at the bottom of the pan, dissolved and into the milk. And just keep stirring. And again, as we come up to a boil, you'll see that this will really start to thicken up. Then, once it's thick, we're going to add in our We'll give it a little taste and we'll add in our mushrooms and our beef. Okay? Be right back. Okay, see those bubbles? It only took another minute. Oh yeah, it's starting to really look like a gravy. And now look how thick that is, okay? Yeah. Now we're gonna take the heat down to low because we're at we're at thickening here. Um let me get a little spoon. Fuck a tear, so it's thickening. <laughs> we want to give it a little taste. I might put in a little bit more salt. 
separate from the Beaumont? Um, well, that was just a little bit more Beaumont. But you mean you're going to put salt on top of it, right? Because the Beaumont is not necessarily salty. It's more flavor. Well, it has salt in it, okay. but I'm trying to think if I want to put maybe... Just a touch of salt? Or I'm going to put some regular regular salt. Table salt. And then uh, don't forget the beef itself is salty, although you kind of rehydrated and took some of the extra salt out. We're going to put a little bit more pepper. And we're going to put our can of mushrooms in. And then, of course, our main attraction here. Did I leave one in there? Yeah. Ralph does not like anything waste going to waste, do you? Can't get it out. Okay. Look at that little sucker. Okay, there. Okay. Ah, now, interesting coloration going on. Okay. So we're just going to let this kind of heat through. I've got it down to low now, but look how wonderful thick that gravy is. Okay. Like anything on toast, and I think I sort of remember having this uh, in the cafeteria in Catholic school years ago. But you probably did. This was a uh, this was a staple in a lot of cafeteria school cafeterias, and a way to stretch uh, a meal. Yeah, absolutely. So what we're going to do here is um, I'm going to take one of these is for you ralph because you have a man size appetite well you like the heel also oh. so i'm going to put yours here and then one of these is for marianne so okay so let's which one's yours that's yours i like the heel and i like it a little almost on the verge of burnt So now, so is the fire off on this concoction, or is it? It's on low. low. It's on okay. the slowest setting. I just wanted that beef to heat through. Right. Okay. And we're gonna let it simmer for about another two or three minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we're gonna serve it up on our nice buttered toast. Look at Sergeant Petrowski <laughs> slaving away and. On KP duty. I love our uh, World War II music. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, here we go. Look at that. Mmm. Got -hmm. it smells so good. Can't wait to try it. Yeah, I think the mushrooms was a good addition because uh, it goes well with a cream sauce or a yeah, roux. and and with uh, you know beef. So, okay, so here we go. So we have our nice toast. And it's, you know, you can put this on any kind of bread. I guess I need to have some tools here to do this job. Or you could call it a sloppy joe and eat it like a mess in a mess hall. But, you know, what's so nice about this is you've got the wonderful bread. And, you know, of course, the longer you let it sit, it soaks up into that. Yeah, I'm going to let mine sit for a little bit and get nice and mm. juicy. Oh, separate back memories. So good. And couldn't have been easier. Um, and it's just a great comfort uh, food. Um, Simple great dish. for lunch. You could have it for dinner with uh, some vegetables and a salad. Be a nice meal, too. And there it is. Talk about an oldie but a goodie. Cream, chip beef on toast. So you know what? Happy cottage season everybody. Happy summer. Uh, we're wishing you all the best for the season and we'll be back with more wonderful good times with our food and our friends here from the cottage and Cavalcade of Food. Thanks for being with us. See you next time. Bye now. Bye.